everyone, it's Catherine here with Ready, Set, ABA, and today I'm going to be going over the seven dimensions of ABA. These dimensions of ABA guide us in our decision making when selecting target behaviors, defining behaviors, or making decisions based on data. An acronym to remember these is Batcage. Sometimes people also say get a cab. And so this is a great way to remember these terms. We'll talk about each one and go through a few examples as well. The first term in bat cage, the first dimension of ABA, is behavior. And this term really emphasizes the importance of identifying behaviors for change that are observable and measurable. So we know with radical behaviorism, this can include private events. If we're going to pick a behavior for change that we need to, that's internal, then we would just need to make sure we create some type of report. That could be a self-report so that this can be measured. Otherwise, the behaviors need to be observable and written in a way that we can make sure we write the data consistently. Next up is applied. This is probably the most important one in my opinion, and this is in regards to social significance. So what does this mean? When we say social significance, we really need to think about how this impacts our client. What is best for our client and why are we working on this skill? So in other words, why are we teaching this skill and how does it improve our client's life? So we don't ever want to target behaviors just because they're inconvenient for other people or they may disturb or annoy other people. That is not a valid reason to target a skill. So for example, we would, would not want to target self-stimulatory behavior unless it negatively impacts our client, meaning there's some type of harm going on. Uh, in something of that nature. Otherwise, we don't worry about it. So just because there may be a behavior that's disruptive doesn't mean that we always need to target it. We want to think, how would this benefit our client if we make this the behavior of focus? Very important to consider the applied piece of the seven dimensions of ABA. Technological is the next term that really is discussing the recipe for our behavior plan. How are we defining the behavior in a clear and concise manner that can be easily replicated? When we're training others or any other caregivers, teachers, therapists on the plans and we're discussing it, we wanna make sure that the plan is written in a way that can be easily replicated. So for example, if we have an operational definition that is not completed, you may, it may yield inaccurate results for data and we have to consider that when we're looking at the data for effectiveness and also when we're making decisions on future interventions. Conceptually systematic is really emphasizing the importance of evidence-based practices and strategies. So when we're selecting interventions for our client, make sure that we're basing it on the ABA research-based interventions. Next up, the analytic term here is really using data to drive our decision-making. So of course we use more than just data, but when we're analyzing the, the data here, we wanna make sure that this is what is really driving our decisions and we're not just saying we feel like it's working. Well, let's look at the data that we've taken and that other people have taken to try to look for those patterns and identify functions so that we can either go in and help with shift the environment or antecedent interventions things like that. So the analytic piece is very important when analyzing data to drive our decision making. Generality is next, so generalization here, talking about can the client perform the skill in many environments with many people and even with many items. So making sure that we're transitioning and working on the skill across caregivers in a variety of different places so that it can be maintained and mastered. Effective is another one and this does take a lot of time and effort. So we have this great plan set up, the behavior plan, the intervention, the skill acquisitions, whatever it might be. Is it actually working? How can we tell? So sure, maybe the sessions feel smoother, the client's making progress, but what does that mean? Is it really working and generalizing? Can we look and see, can we look at the baseline and compare it to the results and say, yes, this intervention was in fact effective and does have that control over the behavior? So this is an important one too that we spend a lot of our time doing, measuring maintenance, retention, and effectiveness of our plans as well. So I hope you enjoyed this summary of the seven dimensions of ABA. I also have a blog post on our website. If you go to readysetaba.com slash blog, you can look there for more information, a more written out version of the things that I was describing. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our Instagram page for more visuals. Thanks everyone.